In this tutorial, we like to give you an overview of the Point Cloud software Pinpoint. Create project. Right after starting Pinpoint, you should create a new project using File, Create. Or by pushing the Create button of the startup screen. Since the input for any Pinpoint project is point-based, you are asked to select one or more Point Cloud files. Pinpoint supports various formats, such as the standard format E57. If you like to import raw 3D data from a laser scanner like Leica BLK 360 or Leica RTC 360, we would like to refer you to the Pinpoint registration tool. Besides the bare data import, the tool allows you to register scans, export the data to standard formats, or pass the data directly to Pinpoint. As usual, you can find all relevant links at the end of this website or via a search on our website. Let's assume we select an E57 file. Before opening, we would like to point out the Show More option. Here you can find meaningful import options for your data. Point Density With a parameter Point Density, you can adjust the amount of point cloud data to a reasonable amount. In this example, we set the point density to an average value of 10 mm, meaning that two neighboring points, for example on a wall, have an average distance of 10 mm. Note, this reduction is used for internal processing, such as pre-processing and visualization. The underlying data will not be altered and keeps its original resolution. Operations like point cloud intersections will still be based on high resolution data. Data accuracy. This option reflects the quality of the noise level of the point cloud. Use high for high end laser scanners like RTC 360 or Faro Focus S. Medium for intermediate devices like Leica BLK 360 or the Metaport camera. For very coarse point clouds, for example from flightovers and photogrammetry, you should set the data accuracy to low. Data With the last option in the input dialog, you specify if your input data is site-specific. Several single registered scans from, for example, Leica BLK360 are an example for site-specific data, while a merged point cloud from a flyover is not site-specific. Click Open after selecting input data and corresponding options. In a second dialog, you will be able to specify the name and location of your pinpoint project. In this example, we keep the suggested name and click Save. After a short loading time, Pinpoint offers the option to specify a region of interest to discard unwanted regions from the import. In this tutorial, we only select the main building. After enclosing the building with a lasso tool, we confirm our selection by hitting Enter or by clicking on the green button at the top right corner. Then Pinpoint starts import and processing which is essential for the user-friendly modeling methodology Pinpoint is offering. This process takes some time and we skip it in the video. After import, it is often useful to specify a new coordinate system to be able to store model data and sections with respect to this coordinate system. You find this function in the menu under Edit, Set Coordinate System. The process consists of three steps. First, define origin. The origin is defined by the intersection of three selected planes. In our example, we like to use the intersection of the south and the east face of the building, as well as the plane defined by the ground floor of the stairway. Click on each plane and check the position of the computed origin. Second, orientation of the z-axis. After setting the origin, the orientation of the z-axis needs to be defined. This can be done by either selecting one or multiple horizontal planes or by selecting a single vertical edge. 
In this example, we use the south and the east face of the building to define this vertical edge, since the floor is often not horizontally orientated. Click on both faces of the building and accept the selection by hitting the button Define as that axis. Third, orientation of the X and Y axis. The last step defines the X or the Y axis. Here we click on the east face of the building and confirm the selection, which uniquely defines the coordinate system. To show or hide the visualization of the coordinate system, click View, Show Coordinate System. In the next chapter, we present an overview of the modeling functions of Pinpoint. Please note that this overview merely presents a subset of the features of Pinpoint. For more detailed tutorials, click on the link at the end of this document. Let's start with the first function. Add Surface. As soon as you activate this function, Pinpoint switches to a view which highlights Panna regions. The visualization can be changed using the View menu or directly by pressing the F1, F2 or F3 keys. When hovering over walls and surfaces, Pinpoint visualizes the underlying planar regions. You can pick these planes by pressing the left mouse button. The mouse cursor is a 3D ball. If this 3D ball touches multiple planar regions, Pinpoint shows the intersecting line for two regions and the intersecting point for three regions. The size of the selection ball can be altered by pressing the Alt key in combination with a mouse wheel. The point size in the visualization can also be altered with a mouse wheel, but in combination with the STRG key. Let's start by outlining the first room and point out some functionalities of the Add Surface feature. Since the job site shown here was not cleaned up before scanning, some of the corners of the room, for example at the door frame, are not visible. The outline of the room can be defined using the floor plane. Therefore, we select it and hold it fixed by clicking on the hand symbol. This allows us to define each corner by only picking two additional planes. We process by clicking on the corners of the room. For the occluded corner at the door, we pick the two planes defined by the adjacent walls. Similarly, it is possible to pick corners which are not scanned at all. After defining the last corner, you can close the polygon by pressing Return or the green Accept button. If you only need a 2D ground view, you can repeat this procedure for the other rooms. All created polygons can be exported to a CAD file. By selecting a polygon with a left click, Pinpoint displays the length of each polygon edge and its area. When more than one polygon is selected, Pinpoint shows the sum of their combined surface area. Next, the basic room structure is modeled by using the Extrude button. First, select the polygon to be extruded from, followed by the destination to be extruded to, in this case the ceiling, and you are done with your first 3D modeled room. To demonstrate the effectiveness of Extrude, we would like to present a second example. Even this screwed roof opening can be modeled just at the previous room. After defining the ground plane with Add Surface, the polygon is extruded till it intersects with the inclined ceiling surface. Optionally, you can force Pinpoint to extrude the volume orthogonally. For this, you activate the respective button on the right side. At this point, you can easily see the deviation of the 3D model from the point cloud. Finally, we like to extrude surface to a given distance. Let's assume that after reconstruction, the room should have a suspended ceiling at a height of 2,70 m. Activate the Extrude function, 
select the ground floor and directly type the value 2.7. After confirming this value with Enter, the volume is extruded accordingly. The function MoveVertex is designed to adapt the vertex positions of already modeled polygons. In this example, the surface of the door was set incorrectly during modeling, such that the real corner of the room does not match the modeled corner. Activate the function Move Vertex and click on the corner to be fixed. As already learned in the step at surface, we pick the three planes that correctly define the corner and thereby adjust the vertex position. The function Intersect allows to cut holes in polygons, for example, doors or windows. Here we already used Add Surface to model the two polygons outlining the windows. The calculation of the surface area is locally linked with this intersect function. Please memorize the area of the wall, which is 14 square meters. Activate Intersect and remove the window areas from the wall. At each step, Pinpoint presents hints about the next step in the status bar. After deactivating the function and selecting the wall again, Pinpoint will show the size of the wall area without the windows, which is now 7 square meters. In the following, we will present the function at points. Similar to at surface, you can use this function to create CAD points by intersecting planes. But you can also create CAD points directly at the surface of the point cloud. To demonstrate the principle, we start with a few points on the staircase and create the puncture points. In the first step, we select the outer vertical plane and fix it using the grab button. Now we pick the steps by selecting the plane of the step tread followed by the plane of the step riser. If the step riser is not fully visible, you can hold the control key on your keyboard. Pinpoint presents a helpful visual feedback, which you can use to manually move the point to its correct position. Let's move to the part Generate tab in the menu bar. Quite popular is a simple function Point Projection. With this function you can create projections with respect to any plane or with a building's coordinate system. In this overview we create a horizontal section through the point cloud, one meter above the ground floor, and a vertical section through a staircase. Note that in contrast to CAD sections, those sections need a certain thickness. In the horizontal case, we therefore define the lower boundary at 0.99 meter, while the upper boundary is placed at 1.01 meter. Activate the point projection and click on the button for the that direction to define the projection direction to horizontal. Immediately, Pinpoint shows this horizontal plane. Next, both boundaries need to be defined. To generate a section 1 meter above the ground floor, we first type 0.99 meters and then 1.01 meter. During the step, the green arrow indicates if you create a sketch with top-down or bottom-up view. After both inputs, we have been confirmed by the user, Pinpoint extracts the points between the planes and creates a 2D sketch. Clicking the small I symbol shows and hides the sketch in the viewer. By clicking the small file symbol, the sketch can be exported to various formats. Note the export options for this step, which also allows you to export the sketch embedded in 3D space. Intersections can additionally be exported to E57, which allows using them in other software. Next, we create a vertical section through the staircase. Pick a vertical wall nearby and define two offsets, for example, before and after the banister. Pinpoint quickly extracts the sections through the point cloud. In the upper right corner, you find a filter function which allows you to highlight certain features like timber work of a roof structure. The function Surface Projection allows you to project the modeled 3D polygons onto a specific plane. Activate this function and select all polygons you would like to use for projection. Then select the direction for the projection. Pinpoint will show the result in the left widget. Again, click on the eye symbol to toggle between 3D and projection view. Click on the file symbol to export the sketch. 
Surface intersection is used to create intersections with a polygonal 3D model. After activating this function and selecting a direction for the projection, Pinpoint visualizes the intersection while moving the plane with a mouse. As usual, it is possible to directly enter an offset value with respect to the base plane. Type 1.0 and hit enter to produce an intersection at a height of 1 meter. In the next step, we will use the function Colorize Mesh. If you have a colored pinpoint, you can use it to colorize your 3D model. When this function is extruded, textures for the 3D model are computed and the resulting colored model can be exported to a standard 3D OBJ file. Last but not least, we would like to present another interesting function. The measurement tool can be used to quantify distances and angles. In contrast to measurement tools used by other software, Pinpoint exploits its unique picking capabilities. Rather than measuring from distinct 3D points, Pinpoint allows it to rely on representative 3D points which are computed by averaging millions of samples. By this, the accuracy can be increased since you overcome problems with noise usually contained in point clouds. Additionally, it enables the user to also include points into the measurements, which are constructed and not visible in the original data. To construct such points reliably, you can employ plane picking and intersection, as described before. Let's catch the corner point above the staircase and measure its height with respect to the ground floor. Of course, you can measure between objects or different floors. What is the height of the ceiling of the first floor with respect to the building's coordinate system? For example, the top edge of the ground floor. Just pick a point on the ceiling and select the button for the z-axis. This brings us to the end of our short introduction to Pinpoint. If you have any questions about Pinpoint, please send it to support at scanner2go.de. If you want to try Pinpoint for yourself, you can find a link to a free trial in the video description below.